Welcome to worship. Welcome whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey. Welcome to Sunday worship at Pilgrim Church in Harwichport, where we believe that everyone is a child of God and a gift to the world, and where we also believe that the Bible is relevant for our lives today. All month, our sermons are about life's surprises. Now, surprises are good in moderation, but most of us prefer to keep surprises at bay. Even when surprises are appropriate, most of us don't really crave a big shock. On our birthdays, for example, we like a predictable gift wrapped in a predictable way, presented at a predictable meal. Now, kids love surprises, the bolder the better, but we lose our enthusiasm for surprise over time. Hosting a wedding is one of those times when no one wants to be surprised. You want the catering to be uneventful, the food to be sumptuous, the wine to flow freely. As a young man, Jesus attended a wedding that was full of surprises. The wine ran out halfway through the reception and Jesus was pressed into service before he wanted to do any miracles. And then the wine turned out to be the best of the night. In the process, this story teaches us all how to handle surprises and how to find the grace to even anticipate or enjoy them. So in this story about a wedding gone wrong, the surprise is on us, all of us who hate surprises. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Our services are broadcast on YouTube and on our website, pcchp.org. Now, before we begin our hymn, I just want to let you know that I will be doing four more services here at Pilgrim Church because I'll be retiring on July 18th of this year. I'll take a break for the rest of the summer, but in the fall, if you want to hear me, you can look for me by doing a search with my name or going directly to my website, Uncommon Preacher. Dot net. I have so enjoyed your support, your response to these services, and all the ways in which you've been encouraging to me. So I will miss a great deal of this experience, but I hope to continue in a different way, in a smaller way, online. Now let us come into God's presence with a song.
join together in prayer. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us this day. Hover over us when we feel nervous or uncertain. Soar above us when we are excited and full of joy. Stand by us when we need a steady hand on our shoulders. We pray today, O oh God, for our families. We will always be grateful for the privilege of having people to love, people who have loved us too. We are grateful for the ability to see the gifts in others, especially those we love, and for those times when we shared something precious, like a tender knowing smile or a steady hand. We pray this day, O oh God, for those who are struggling with health challenges, those who are worried about the next set of tests, those searching for advice, those putting on a brave face when they don't feel all that brave underneath. Come to them this day and hold them in your arms, Holy Spirit. Relieve some of the tensions they carry. Surround their families with calm and reassurance. And lift us up when we see those whom we love on paths that feel uncertain or see them struggling to find the joy we so hope they'll know. We pray for those, O oh God, who are lost, and there's no other way to describe it. Help us to resist the temptation to try to save them and to trust that just as you sought and found the prodigal son in the Bible, you will help those we love to come to themselves and to find their way home. We pray, gracious God, for our nation. Nurture those impulses in this land to find common ground, to speak the truth in love, to avoid easy answers when complexity is called for, to listen to the human cries of those we see as other or stranger. Bless the people all around the globe and here at home who struggle with COVID-19. Grant them your tender mercy and teach us how to come together to restore the health of our planet, both its people and its resources. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, who teaches us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are so grateful for your generous support of Pilgrim Church throughout the pandemic and now as we emerge from it. We're hoping to continue to have online worship as well as in-person worship throughout the summer. So we encourage you all to continue to support the church by making your pledge online through Facebook or the website pcchp.org. If you're new to Pilgrim Church and feel inspired to give a gift, we appreciate your generosity.
My sermon today is entitled, Unexpected Bounty. The scripture lesson comes from John 2, 1 to 12. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. When the wine ran out, Jesus' mother said to him, they don't have any wine. And Jesus replied, woman, what does that have to do with me? My time hasn't come yet. But his mother told the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now nearby there were six stone water jars used for the Jewish cleansing ritual, each able to hold 20 or 30 gallons. And so Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. And they filled them to the brim. And then he told them, now draw some from them and take it to the head waiter. And they did. And the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine. He didn't know where it came from, though the servants who'd drawn it knew. The head waiter called the groom and said, everyone serves the good wine first. They bring out the second rate wine only when the guests are drinking freely. But you kept the good wine until now. This was the first miraculous sign that Jesus did in Cana of Galilee. He revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. After this, Jesus and his mother his brothers and his disciples went down to Capernaum and stayed there for a few days. Well, here's a story that's full of surprising reversals. It starts when Jesus and his mother are both invited to a wedding. And that's kind of surprising. It's kind of surprising to see this human side of Jesus. And it's one of the only places in the Bible where we see Jesus with his mom. That's a pleasant surprise. Shortly after the party begins, the wine runs out. That's a terrible surprise. But then Mary saves the day by suggesting that her son can help. And that's a confusing surprise because Jesus is still young and he's just a guest. And then reluctantly, Christ turns the water in these massive stone jars into wine. That's an astonishing surprise. And then the wine steward discovers that the wine is better than anyone expected. A lovely surprise. Well, this is a roller coaster of twists and turns, every surprise more confusing than the last. How did the family underestimate the amount of wine that was be needed? Why did Mary become so involved and then push Jesus forward to save the day? Was Christ ready to start making miracles? And when he did get involved, why waste such good wine on a crowd that had been partying for a while and wouldn't appreciate it? What's going on in this story? And what can we learn from it? In the first place, the story says, you may have gifts that you don't recognize. We think of Jesus as the man of miracles. So we forget that he had to grow into that role. In this story, Christ is so new to ministry that miracles are not second nature to him. Taking care of others isn't his first thought. He came to the party to dance. But Mary hears about the wine shortage and comes up with a plan to save the day. She talks to the steward and then to Jesus. She pushes him to step up. She knows him. She's seen his promise. She believes in him and she pressures him to meet this moment head on. 
All the while, Jesus is irritated by his mother. Maybe he doubts he can make a difference. Maybe he's so young he just needs to show off a little and creates better wine than is needed. But the story says we all need someone who believes in us so that we can grow into our potential. A young teen from Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, won a big violin competition last week. Kayla Wakao is 15, and she just won the Menuhin competition, the top prize for musical prodigies. She won the junior division for musical prodigies between 12 and 17. One of the judges, Angela Yu, told the New York Times that Wakao captured him with her first notes. For such a young performer, he said, she's already mature and allows her music to convey so many feelings, which is what makes her a great artist, so much more than a student who plays the violin. Although Wakao has worked hard and won plenty of other competitions, something she did in this competition, which was an international one, told the judges that she had true gifts and potential to become one of the greatest violinists in the world. We all need people to see who we are. This is Open and Affirming Sunday in our United Church of Christ. Some people wonder every year why we have to make a big deal about it, especially when we've already become open and affirming to all people, regardless of their economic status, their race, their class, their different abilities, or their sexual orientation. But the reason we cannot let up on our advocacy for all people, especially in our churches, is because children and kids and young adults go through such self-doubt, trying to discover who they are or trying to come out. People with different abilities go through such challenges, hoping to be accepted or struggling to fit in. Families and individuals desperately need the support and love of our churches. That's why we say the words we say at the start of every service here, to remember and remind ourselves of our commitment, and then to talk about it in an intentional way, at least once a year. Who's that one person who believed in you? Who saw your talents or gifts? Who suggested that you had what it took to advance, to shine, to use your gifts? We all need those people who become for us like Mary was for Jesus, a parent, a counselor, a teacher, a coach, or in some cases, we've had perfect strangers who came along and saw gifts in us that we didn't know we had. We all need someone to see our potential. And secondly, the story says, Jesus will always lead with his best. What's fascinating here is that Jesus's first miracle is a doozy. I'm not sure why he turned that water into a fine Pinot Grigio or Chardonnay when an ordinary box of wine would have done just fine. I wonder if he was so inexperienced at miracles that he shot a little too high or flexed his miracle muscles too hard. But I believe something else is going on. The Bible says Jesus always leads with his best. It's who he is. Christ isn't stingy with us. He wants us to have the best. It's something to think about. 
You see, it's a mistake to think that Jesus looks down on our suffering or hopes we'll learn our lessons when we struggle. That's Miss Hannigan, the sadistic head of the orphanage in the musical Annie. That's not Jesus. Christ isn't like that. He never withholds the good wine, even halfway through the wedding, when folks may not be able to appreciate his gift. For many of us, it is surprising to discover that God wants to shower us with the very best in life. That's real love, when people want you to have the best. I remember a birthday gift I got years ago. A friend gave me a box of expensive chocolate, and the tag said, it's all for you. She knew me. She knew I had three kids and a generous heart. She know, knew that it would be my first thought to give a lot of this gift away if she didn't tell me that it was intended for me. See, that's what Jesus is hoping you will come to recognize, that he wants the best for you. It's just so surprising. Most of us cannot take this good news in. And finally, the story says, when things fall apart, there may be a miracle on the way. The story says, when things get bad at the wedding or in life, don't assume you're headed over a waterfall. When their wine supply ran out, people panicked. They didn't know what to think. Hardly anyone suspected that God was setting the stage for his son's first miracle. When the wine runs out, most of us wring our hands and fret. But the story says, even when things fall apart, God's at work. That's the story of the Exodus, the story of Ruth and Esther, the story of Jesus's resurrection. Kayla Wakao, the young violinist, wasn't expecting to win a violin competition this spring. The competition was canceled in 2020 due to the pandemic. She'd auditioned on Zoom. She was dealing with all the ups and downs of online school. But the time at home had helped her focus on music, and it may have set the stage for her bright light to shine. It's good to remember this message about hope in crisis because our news is way too full of surprises and has been for months. We come to worship halfway through 2021, living our own roller coaster. Life's up and down these days. The year started with uncertainty after the most unsettling year of our lives. We, can hardly, we came hardly hoping the pandemic would subside in 2021. We found there were vaccines ready to go, but then we were surprised to discover how hard it was to sign up to get one. And then with supplies of vaccines readily available now, we're learning how many people are avoiding them. The other lesson now is that the virus has mutated and these vaccines are less and less effective against the new Delta variant. And some doctors are now bracing for another wave of disease. Who knows what will happen? But if the story has anything to teach us, it is that this moment of uncertainty may well be a time of new surprises and even new life. I chose this theme for the summer of 2021, surprise, because I thought it would be reassuring for us in this church at a time of ministerial transition following my retirement announcement. Stories about unexpected bounty like this one at the wedding at Cana may help us see that when things seem to be falling apart Christ is working on a miracle. 
not just any miracle, but a miracle of new bounty that no one expected. I believe that whenever we face life's surprises, openly and honestly, if we have faith, God will often surprise us with new blessings. And that's something we all need to hold on to, especially now. Let us pray. God, you know the way. You've led us this far. Help us to trust you with our lives as we face the future. Amen. Now, may the living Christ go with you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, behind you to encourage you, and before you to show you the way. Amen.